Greetings on Hi. Hi. Live long and prosper. Let's see it. I can't do it. <laughs> also, thank you for joining us. We encourage you to take your first steps into this life-giving local church and find the community and the support that you've been hoping for. Would you stop by at Mayo High School for one of our services at 9.15 or 10.45 a.m. on Sundays? We'd love to meet you. We hope that you will find Echo to be your place, your people, and your purpose. It can all be found in one space. It sure can. It's what we are all looking for, as always. Oh man, here we go. As always, there are tons of things going on in the next few months. Please take a few moments right now and check out our Echo Weekly email to see what's happening. Someone get pumped for Easter. Anyone. Come on, we have an amazing Sunday planned for you as always. Yes, so join us. Also, we have a great we have great extra activities and add-ons for you and your children as we celebrate Jesus. We want to remind you that Easter is one of the best opportunities to invite someone to church. The probability of someone saying yes to your invitation is off the charts. So please boldly invite those who need to hear about the love of Jesus. This could change everything. Yes. Did you know that Echo is committed to give more than 10% annually to our, our partners locally, nationally, and globally? We are able to do so because of your consistency with the giving of your tithe, which is a tenth of your income, to and through Echo Church. If you're looking to donate, please head to our website, Venmo us at We Are The Echo Church. And now we would like you to enjoy the rest of service. <laughs>
doing today? That's what I'm saying. You got to get a little excited about today because it's not just me preaching, okay? Come on, someone get excited about that, right? You know what I'm saying? Come on. Hey, uh, we are in a brand new series called Flip and Point. Some of you are like, what, what about flipping point? No, no, flip and point. Uh, let, me, let me just go ahead and illustrate what I'm talking about. And some of you have done this through your lifetime. I know I used to do it quite often, and I'll tell you that here in a moment. But the concept is this, is flip and point. Anybody want to hear it? Okay, those with clean hands and pure hearts who don't make vanities the purpose of their lives or swear oaths just to deceive. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> How many of you have ever done that in, 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 in your spiritual walk, right? You know, like, like, like if you were like me when I was young, I, I, at some point I had, I had I'd kind of flipped the script, if I could play on words a little bit, and, and uh, I, I really gave my life to Jesus, but the practices didn't necessarily follow immediately. And so there was moments in my walk with Christ and, and my walk within Scripture and hearing God's voice that was just the best way I could say it was, in, it was inconsistent. So what would I do? Well, when I wanted to hear God's word, I was like, oh, where do I start? You know, where do we even go? And, and I just remember I would open up the Bible and I'd, I'd flip open a page and I would point. And, and you know, sometimes it works. Sometimes the Lord really like showed up and, 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 and really like made it clear to me like what I needed to hear that day or that week or whatever it might be. But you know what? I got to be honest. Many times it didn't work. <laughs> if it did work, it's because I flipped in points 10 times. It took me 10 times to get to the point. And, and I guess what I'm trying to, to, to really encourage us is, you know what, is the fight against the inconsistency. And I'm just wondering over the next 21 days if we could, we could intentionally purpose to flip and point. Flip and point to a very specific, specific uh, portion of scripture. And, and that leads me to tell you a little bit about what you were handed on, on your entry here within the auditorium. Uh, we gave you what we call the daily out. And what we're encouraging you to do is join this community to go uh, really down a journey or the road of prayer, fasting, and pursuit of God. Uh, has anybody ever fasted before? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, oh, you just lost all the heavenly gifts from doing, from admitting that. <laughs> but at a point, I, my, my, my humor is horrible. Forgive me. Okay. But, um, but, but what, what we do is every year about this time is we do 21 days of prayer and, and fasting. And, and what we have created is a roadmap to pursue God. Prayer and fasting is, is, is supposed to be a practice that we apply into our relationship with God. It's something that's not, it's nothing, of, nothing of this is new. In fact, it is, it is old and it has been displayed uh, for generations. And, and, and just to make it really clear, what I believe prayer and fasting is all about is the pursuit of our Father. This isn't about humans doing, but this is about humans being with the father that is pursuing you. And so what I want to do is in, 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 include, or really encourage you individually to join us collectively on a 21-day pursuit of God and what he wants to do in you, but yet do in us together. You all get what I'm saying there? And so we've made it really simple, okay? We made it really simple. We have created 21 days to pursue God. And, and honestly, I'm gonna just tell you how I'm gonna do it, okay? If I could do that. I am gonna start at dusk tonight. For the next 21 days, I am gonna choose a fasting method and I'm gonna pursue God, okay? And you know, I like dusk tonight is because we're gonna have our table community tonight and I'm gonna eat and I'm going to eat, I'm going to feast, and then I'm going to eat some more. And then for the next 21 days, I'm going to pursue God. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to allow God to challenge my appetites. Okay? 
I'm gonna let them challenge my appetites because I, I realize that I can fall into a little bit of a rut. I can fall into uh, a certain desire of, of like, hey man, when I'm like feeling a little hungry, all I do is grab for the n- next snack. And I think what fasting is supposed to do is interrupt that notion. And instead of reaching towards your phone, t- t- towards the food or t- towards a certain activity, what if we as a group of individuals that say, you know what, we're gonna turn towards God instead. That's what I think fasting is all about. Now, let me tell you about the four fasts that I I think are primarily displayed scripturally, okay? And again, like, God, I I don't know if you knew this, but like the the phone was never created in Jesus' day. So you never really had to bring up the importance of fasting the phone, you know what I'm saying? And really the focus scripturally has always been about fasting food. But honestly, in today's day and age, I would challenge you to not only fast food, but really fast the things that are feeding your soul. And, and anyway, so four fasts. So there's a, there's, there, for the next 21 days, maybe there's someone in here. Uh, you could do a whole fast. I call it the, the whole fast. It means like legitimately the only thing you're going to do and eat and consume or anything you're going to consume is water over the next 21 days. Now, now let me make it very clear to you. That is hardcore. And, and, and a lot of times in life and in our spiritual walk, God may press that upon our, our heart and our mind, but he does that, I think, very infrequently. And in fact, like some of you, it would just be impossible to do that uh, in, in your current season. In fact, if you are a person that, that works like manual, manual labor, you're probably not a great candidate to do a whole fast. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you will wholly die, I guarantee you. <laughs> Okay, and, 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 and then there's others of you that like physically, you're just not capable uh, because of, of maybe physical issues that you carry. And so I, I wanna tell you, this isn't for me to guilt you. I'm not even really trying to motivate you to do it, but if the Holy Spirit is leading you to do it, then guess what, who should do it? You should do it. The other type of fast is what we call a Daniel fast in, in our walk with Christ. It's really a, a fast that has been modeled by a portion of Daniel and Daniel being one of the prophets and one of the, uh, you know, one of the people and, and voices in the Old Testament who chose to change his diet to pursue Christ first. Because I, I think, as I said, fasting is, a, a, they're gonna, is gonna mess with your appetite. But if we put our appetite aside for a moment, then what it does is it changes our approach in life. And if it changes our approach, then I believe what God wants us to experience is his awesome nature and his character and his being. Y'all get what I'm saying there? And so the Daniel fast is this, and this is one that I kind of prefer, is I eliminate a, a bunch of things out of my diet and I pursue God with kind of the bare minimums of, 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 of a certain dietary restriction. And again, if you've never heard of the Daniel Fast, honestly, Google it. There's tons of awesome resources from churches all around the world that would be able to equip you to do so. I love the Daniel Fast. And then there's, there's a, the concept, and, and again, I think most of us would do this, and I hope you would. I think some of you should fast like a whole day from food. And maybe just drink juice and water. And, and, and honestly, let, let God stir something within you. Because guess what? When you say no to an appetite, God starts doing something new. Because like when we, when we step out and do something we've never done before, I believe he sets our mind and our spirit uh, to be receptive to maybe hear or see things different. And I can just tell you this is like, what's good about the day fast is again, like when I'm reaching for a snack, the, the whole idea is this, instead of reaching for that snack, cause I can't, cause I said, God, I'm not going to do it for the day. I reach towards him and I lean in and say, Lord, would you speak to me? And then the last uh, way to fast, and I would hope that every single one of us would do this, like including this would make us 100% collectively pursuing God for the next 21 days, that we would consider at least fasting a few meals over the next 21 days. And what I would say is if you say no to a meal, that is a moment where you say yes to God. For many of us, it's it's fasting over the lunch hour. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to our, our car and and we're gonna put some worship music on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna w- read what has been slotted for us to read during the day and say, Lord, would you speak to me? Fasting is not dieting. Did y'all hear what I said? 
Fasting is not dieting. Fasting is saying no to something in order to say yes to God. And honestly, I think our, 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 like the whole culture of who we are and the spiritual fervor and desire and passion for our awesome God would change if we would all do this for the next 21 days. And I'm not asking you to non-intentionally and just flippantly open up and flip and point. I'm asking, would you flip and point with us as a collective group saying, Lord, we feel as if you want to teach us something. And fasting isn't about you. Fasting is, I believe, learning the character and learning about the presence of God and what he's saying to you today. And so that's why we've, we've made this awesome reference point. There's a scripture that you would read. Again, like this is about quanti- quality, not quantity. You'll see that it's, it's very short. And then what we have right next to is you see an element of the character of God. And you know, if you're following Jesus, you know what we're all trying to do? We're all just trying to be like more like Jesus. Y'all get what I'm saying? And so like when I fast, I, I don't want to really, I mean, again, it's nice when the Lord reveals certain things about me, but if, if, if anything, I want God to reveal more about who he is so then I can become more like him. Can I hear an amen? And then lastly, I, I think obviously we're praying, then let's fast and or, or we're also, or we're, we're fasting, so let us also pray. And, and you know, we've given you a little prayer point. And in this first, this first uh, day, you know, as we will read that tomorrow, is we will see that God is an encourager. And if you see God as an encourager and what he's encouraging us about, then we as a people would begin to recognize our blessings. And sometimes prayer isn't about asking God for something, but just saying thank you for the something that he's already given you. And by the way, we're all blessed. Every look at your neighbor and say, you are blessed to sit next to me. <laughs> So please join us in this journey of 21 days of prayer, fasting, and pursuit. And, and you know, we got something special planned today. I'm really excited about it. Um, you're not just going to hear from me. Can I hear an amen? Well, we've, I've asked a few guys to come up here just in a moment, right after the video, to come up, flip open the page in scripture, and point at a scripture and speak about it. But let's see how it went when they did that for the very first time this week. Stop. Yeah. Right there. Let's see. Song of Songs, <laughs> verse six. How beautiful you are and how pleasing. Oh, love with your delights. Ooh, delights. Yeah. <laughs> All right, 1 Samuel 10, verse 14 says, Now Saul's uncle asked him and his servant, Where have you been? Looking for the donkeys, he said. But when we saw there were none to be found, we went to Samuel. That's deep. That is, <laughs> that is life-changing right there, I'm sure, for some reason. <laughs> Numbers. <laughs> 20, uh, 19, the Israelites replied, we will go along the main road and if we or our livestock drink any of your water, we will pay for it. We, will, we only want to pass through on foot, nothing else. Again, they answered, you may not pass through. Sorry, it's a no-go. Oh man, is anybody excited? To hear from my favorite people in the world, some of my favorite people in the world. But before we begin, can we just appreciate the hair loss represented here on stage? I mean, come on, Scott, would you just please take that hat off for a second? Um, I, I got to be honest, I feel a little left out, so just hold on for a second here, okay? Just hold on. Hold on here, okay, okay. Okay. Oh man. Go get I your sunglasses. This at home. It's not going well right now. Oh, oh man. Hold on. Hold on. I mean, we can clip it for you. I didn't bring the shaver here, so. Run to your car and get oh, your sunglasses. Oh man, this is falling flat on its face here. Okay. Can we just get a? Can we just get a photo together here? <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> oh, 
No, literally, I was praying like a couple weeks ago, and I was like, you know, who should I ask to go on stage? And I had this vivid image of this glistening <laughs> cue ball. And I was like, I know exactly who I should ask. I should ask these guys. No, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, but I asked these guys to come up because, um, again, we don't really talk much about this. Does anybody want a bald cap, by the way? You know, yeah, Will, Will, would you wear that all service, please? Um, no, but honestly, like, uh, we don't talk about this much, but, but Echo Church has certain structures in place uh, and accountability in place. And for those that have never been to Echo Culture, um, you, you may not know this, but we, we submit under some overseers who are pastors outside of the church who are, we're, we are in relationship with. And then what we have chosen to do is also include a group of individuals who are within the church to be what we call inside eyes to the Echo Church, to be our friend, to be our support, but also be our accountability. And these are some of the guys that are part of, actually all the guys that are part of the group, but we've also welcomed uh, their beautiful wives uh, to be a part of that. And so uh, when we prayed and said, Lord, you know, who should we invite to uh, this type of group? Um, I didn't know this theme when, when, I, <laughs> when, when all these names came to mind. You guys aren't laughing nearly as much as <laughs> first hour. Um, but it's because of who they are. And, and honestly, we, we, um, we ask them to, to support us in this way and serve the church in a unique way because they have been faithful to God and, and also faithful in front of men and women, y'all get what I'm saying? And so it's just really easy for me to ask these guys to come up here and share the platform and speak what God wants to say through them. And that's what I'm hoping with this flipping Point series is this, is that you recognize that you have a story and you have a voice and God wants to use it that God wants to use it. So that's why I love moments like this where we put a few stools and a couple uh, chairs on stage and we say, Lord, what if you were to speak through someone other than the pastors? Do you know what I'm saying? And uh, just recognizing that God has called all of us to be a part of the priesthood of this world and that God wants to use you as well. So uh, as I think about these guys with sincere heart, man, I, I, I look at Eric and for those that don't know, he, he's amazing. And when I think of him, man, he is just a humble and sincere man. And he's just amazing and I appreciate your friendship. Scott, man, he has been so committed. And, and such a great friend for so many years. And it's an honor to serve in this capacity. And for those that, that are like, man, Doug looks familiar, but I don't remember where I've seen him. Yes, he's the one who taught us Taekwondo. <laughs> he is Sensei Doug. Come on, somebody. <laughs> But he also does security. And as I was thinking about just that role that he plays here, he really is this beautiful, safe place. And, and he's a sincere heart that loves people. And, and, you know, and he loves to serve too. So can we just take a moment, honor all these guys? They're amazing. So because of the unique nature of legitimately flipping and pointing into scripture and the difficulty of that, um, I told them we were going to do that before we filmed. So they thought maybe we were actually going to speak about what was mentioned here in the video earlier. But what we did is we flipped and uh, pointed at some of the scriptures within the 21 days of prayer and fasting. And so I'm so excited to hear uh, about the scripture that you guys flipped and pointed to and what God wants to speak through you about today. So let's hear it once again for Dougie Fresh. Well, uh, of, of the group up here, I'm the least of the public speakers. <laughs> but fortunately, when we met and got our assignment, uh, Andy said, hey, you only need five minutes. It's like, well, I can do this for five minutes. So, <laughs> and I got to practice on the first service, so we're going to see what's yeah, going to happen come on. here. Now, uh, I am being a little bit disobedient, and Andy wanted us basically to throw it from the cuff. Well, I need notes, so I made a couple notes just to stay focused, and now that I have this, this second chance to speak to everybody, and, and I have this abundance of confidence, <laughs> I, I need the notes to keep me focused on you know, what we're doing here. 
So I'll get started. Um, I had point, pointed to Matthew 5, verses 43 to 48, which talks about um, when Jesus, he, he, Jesus is speaking, obviously, and he's teaching about loving enemies. So you've heard the, you've heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good. And he, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only, only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you're kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect even as the Father in heaven is perfect. So a, a little bit of context. Um, when Jesus spoke that, it probably ticked off the Jews quite a bit because you know, they had been taught and, and led to believe that they needed to hate their neighbors. They needed to hate their neighbors. Um, you know, the, the Pharisees interpreted Leviticus and Psalms to, to say, um, love only those that love you and hate your enemies. So when Jesus comes out and con kind of contradicts that, um, they probably were, were a little bit upset. But there, there, are, there are references in, in scriptures in the Old Testament that do talk about um, examples of being merciful. So it, it was kind of a teaching thing that led them down this path of you know, hating your neighbors. But as you can see in, in the verse, Jesus is telling us to treat enemies with love, compassion, uh, respect. Um, and what he's really trying to say here is we can overcome evil with good. Um, he, he does make the point explicitly in here. He says, you know, that the father gives his sunlight to the good and the evil. He gives rain to the just and the unjust. So who are we, us, to only love the, the, those that love us? You know, and, and at the end... And kind of the theme of, you know, for this particular scripture for the 21 days is perfect. And he said, but you are to be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Well, how do we do that? And there's kind of four, four points. The first being, um, be perfect in character. Now, we're flawless, and it's gonna be, we can never be perfect, but we can certainly aspire to be perfect as much as Christ, and try to be as much as possible like Christ was. Uh, two, in holiness, we are to separate our, ourselves from the world um, through ten, you know, the world's temptations and sins. But we want to do that according to God's will for us. That's good. C, in maturity. <laughs> Come on, who got that one? All right. So being perfect in maturity, and that's very much a journey. It, 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 there's spiritual growth that needs to happen, and it does take time. Some maybe it's, for, it's faster than it is for others. But certainly surrounding yourself around like a group of people like this, you can grow in maturity with your spiritual life. And then finally, in love. And that's very much the theme here, loving your enemies. Seek to love others as God loves us. So in summary, a couple of takeaways. In order to move forward in, in love, you know, for some of us, there's going to need to be a transformation. And that transformation is usually on the inside. Uh, for me personally, an example was um, for, for a long time, I, I had issue with my dad in you know, growing up as a teenager and seeing some of the choices that he was making or decisions that he had, he had made and maybe some behaviors. I was, I was challenged because that's, that's not what I needed. It wasn't what I was expecting from my dad. Um, but it, there reached a point in my maturity, in my walk, where I had to give it up. I had to give it up to the Lord. And when that happened, it wasn't too long thereafter that I realized, well, it's really what the Lord was speaking to me. He was telling me that, you know, he's doing the best he can based on what he was taught. Yeah. You know, his environment that he grew up in, my grandfather, 
and understanding that seeing where my dad had come from and the things that he was taught or not taught, those all led to you know, his choices and behaviors. But certainly that's an example for me to, to move beyond it and accept him for who he is. So then in, in turn, I can love him for where he's at. And then I can move forward and use that as an example of what I don't want to be and how I want to raise my family. And the other takeaway, um, be first. And this one could be, a little, could be a little bit of a challenge for folks, but be first to forgive. Yeah. Be first to help. Be first to reach out to those that maybe you don't like or love, whatever it might be, or somebody that's maybe a perceived enemy. Be first to reach out. Break that ice so that you can move forward and move beyond it and help them grow. Hey, let's hear it for Doug. Um, Doug, it's so funny how, you know, this scripture makes reference to be perfect as your father is perfect. It's so funny how we look at our enemies and we demand perfection. But when we look in the mirror, <laughs> That's good. Yeah. yeah, I guess it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. <laughs> so let's hear it again one time for Doug. Great, great word, man. You know, I like what Doug said when he said that we're not, like he feels like the lesser of the public speakers or whatever. You know, it's funny, there's people like me who don't stop talking, and then there's people like Doug who when he speaks, we all stop to listen. And I think sometimes we underestimate certain things and, and qualities, and that's a, a big thing I appreciate about Doug. Uh, so my scripture's really long, so you guys don't have to listen to me read this thing. Um, and public reading is not a strength. Would you like to read mine, Doug? Um, <laughs> So let me read this, and then we'll get into it a little bit. Uh, and by the way, I was going to say one thing. These are all part of the same sermon. Like, it's just continuous, and these are just parts of it. So, like, when we do the 21 days, it's really cool because it builds, and it talks about other ideas, and kind of goes on and on. So, um, all right, so Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the fields grow? They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? You do not worry, so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need him. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself, each day has enough trouble of its own. All right, so, uh, you know, I will tell you, one of the things that stuck out to me initially when I first read this was, I've always felt like, this, this scripture uses worry a lot. If you use other translations, it uses the word anxious or anxiety. I always thought of those as kind of modern day issues. I felt like we are like people of worry, but I don't know, people 50 years ago, or I don't know, let's go back 100 years ago when they were like, I don't know, plowing fields by hand or whatever they were doing. Like, they weren't worried. And, and instead, what you realize, or like what really stuck out to me was 2,000 years ago, in a place where the, the Jews had been overrun by another empire, and they were still worried. They were still struggling with certain things. And so, um, about, probably about 18 months ago or so, Jamie came to me, my wife, and she said, hey, you're crabby lately. Now, that's not my normal disposition, so I'm like, I'm like at first, I, would, I wanted to say, I don't think you know what you're talking about. <laughs> but it, that probably wouldn't have been healthy. Maybe I did say that. I don't know. I probably did. Um, so we had this conversation, and it's like I started processing this. I'm like, why would it be crabby? Why would it be crabby? You know, what's going on? So I tried to kind of mentally change my, my thoughts and try to be a little, more, a little more kind and whatnot. But it's just in like the last 10 days, Jamie and I had a few conversations that kind of occurred to me why I've been so crabby. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, uh, professionally, I'm a financial advisor, and so I help people with their money and making big decisions and uh, estate planning and all these really, like, kind of, a lot of times really complex things. 
But one of the things that I feel like people measure me by is how the stock market does. Uh, now that's, and I'll kind of come back to this, but I always feel, so I feel this pressure. Like if you as a client of mine invested your money with me and it's worth less today than it was a year ago, like that not only does it hurt you, but it hurts your financial advisor. So just so you know, your financial advisor right now is probably having a rough time too. I'll just throw that out there. Uh, not a bad idea just to say, hey, we appreciate you. Just throwing that out there for everybody else. You don't have to do that for me, but not, not just for everybody else. Um, it's been a tough, like, 18 months. And if you really break it out, it's been a tough, like, three and a half years, uh, a lot of challenges that way. So um, one of the things that I realized when I was talking to Jamie was that every time I was going to have a meeting with somebody or any time somebody said, hey, I, I, you know, I want to talk to you, uh, can we schedule a time, I automatically was on the defensive like conflict was coming. So I was mentally preparing for this fight that was about to happen. Now, like 99 times out of 100, it was never negative. But I had like physically and emotionally already gone through the fight ahead of time. Like I've dealt with the, here's why they're going to be mad and here's maybe how I'll respond and here's where I'll try to be kind. I'm, like I'm playing through these whole things in my head. And what I realized was I was carrying a burden that wasn't mine to carry. You know, I, I like to think I'm a pretty good financial advisor, but I'm not a fortune teller and I can't tell you the future but I can put you on a path that'll help you get to where you want to get to. And so I, I had to kind of take solace in the things I could control and release a little bit the things that I couldn't control. So I was having this conversation with Pastor Andy this week on Wednesday because I thought I was the only person who was always on the defensive. And it turns out we had a very similar experience when we were talking about that. And so I, like, as a takeaway today, I want to give you guys a little um, a little encouragement to help all of your relationships, which is if I'm like, hey, Doug, I'd love to talk to you sometime. Let's connect. If you're anything like me or anything like Pastor Andy or I don't know, probably all of us, you're like, oh, geez, <laughs> what happened? What did I do to Doug? What did I say? And instead go, hey, Doug, I would love to chat. I haven't seen you for a while and I was just thinking about you and I just wanted to encourage you and we haven't hung out. Let's go have coffee. Like if you set the tone or Doug, I'm worried about security at church. I want to talk through, uh, you know, I, maybe I want to volunteer and be a part of it, or I, I have an idea, or one of those things. Just set the tone for those conversations ahead of time so that you automatically don't go, they don't want to be my friend anymore, <laughs> or they don't want to be my client anymore, or they're leaving the church. Jamie and I went to dinner last night. So funny. We had a conversation ahead of time because in our, in our eyes, it was like, they kind of, it, it a little bit felt like they wanted to meet with us, not just go out to dinner. And so my wife's mind immediately went to, uh, they're probably leaving the church. It's probably bad news. And instead it was like the best dinner ever and they're amazing and they're all in and it wasn't, but it's just so funny what we have the ability to do when we take on some burdens that aren't for us. So I have one quote I want to leave you with. Uh, I love this quote. Uh, there's like two quotes in the world that I just quote all the time and I don't really know any other ones. So Jim Carrey has this quote and he says, I wish that everyone could get rich and famous and have everything they ever dreamed of so that they can see that's not the answer. You can choose followers and money all you want. Don't let me stop you. But I hope you'll realize beyond your basic needs that won't do much. I just wonder if sometimes we're taking on burdens we shouldn't and missing out on the responsibilities and the opportunities we have in front of us. Awesome. Let's hear for Scotty Scholl here. Thank you. I, the thing that just kind of like hooked me in my heart a little bit is fight the pre-fight. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we have two sides to play on that. Fight the pre-fight. Look at your neighbor and say, fight the pre-fight. Well, I did a flipping point, Matthew 6. It's verses 5 through 10. And I'll tell you, if you're anything like me, it's going to stop right in the middle of a prayer. It's kind of a well-known prayer, and it drives me nuts, right? It's like leaving a cabinet door just partway open. So I am going to read, and it's going to stop halfway through, and it's going to probably kill me more than it kills you. So here we go. Prayer. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father who in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> done. 
I'm going to go back and reread two verses, though, for you. So back in verse 7, um, it goes, And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. He knows everything, right? And yet, what happens right after that? They say, God already knows. He knows everything, but pray, right? And I, I don't know, but it feels kind of like opposite ideas to me of like, God knows, and we should still pray. Why? What's the point? So I can't help but wonder when I read that or think about it is, is prayer less about me informing God? It's less about me like bending him to my will. Hey, God, I want you to do this, and I got to tell you about this, because he already knows. Maybe prayer could be more about our relationship with God, spending time with him and nurturing that relationship. So I have a little story for this. In the Christensen household, my awesome kids, we like to have fun. And we play hide-and-go-seek. Tag. I, by the way, I played hide-and-go-seek one time at another kid's house, and they don't play the tag version. They're just like, you go, and you find them, and that's it. We play tag. Tag is like, you go, and you hide, and you have to get to base. And they're trying to tag you before you get to base. And we are hardcore in our house. We will turn off the lights. We will shut the windows. We will, like, and if, you know, windows don't always have curtains, so we'll put, like, stuffed pillows in it. And we will hang up blankets with chip clips, you know, just to make it block. Even, like, the little tiny lights of the phone, if there's, like, a light, or if there's a light of the microwave clock, we will tape paper over it, right? So we, we get all, we get dressed in black. We will go up into, you know, I'm like, I'm going to get dressed in all black. My bald, I've learned over the years, my bald head sticks out, right? You try to hide, and it's like, beam, here I am. So I get a hood, like a black shirt with a hood, to try to hide more, right? So we're, we're all in. And many times, I will volunteer to be it first. So, okay, I'm going to go hide. I'm going to go upstairs to the bedroom and count. <laughs> and sometimes, my kids, sometimes they can be like ninjas and hide super, super well, right? And I'm like, I didn't hear where they went. And they are just, they're sitting there, and they are quiet. They are pros. And sometimes, <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but they are laughing. They are having fun. They're like stomping around, slamming doors. And I'm thinking, you guys, the game is hide and go seek. You were supposed to be quiet, so I don't know where you are. But it's, you know, it's fun. And so some of them, I wonder if they know to be quiet. Some of them, maybe they don't realize I know. And the worst one that kills me is, I'm like, the time's getting close, right? And they're all in their spots. And they will even yell, come find us, we're ready. And I'm like, I hear you. Like, I know where you are. The game hasn't begun, and I already know where they are hiding. And when we play, I do not just say, all right, it's done, game's over, I already know where they are, what's the point? I still play, right? It is fun. And it's a lot of fun, probably more fun for me than the kids, to be honest. And I think many times that is like our prayer life too. God already knows what we need. God already knows what's on our hearts, what's going on. But he wants us. He wants us to be with him. And so sometimes I think with a relationship, it's um, the amount of time that we invest into a relationship can be a factor in how good that relationship is. So, like, if we were all to hang out all the time, you can't help but have, like, a really strong relationship. If the reverse was, like, we don't see each other once every, like, two, three years, it's going to be hard to keep that relationship strong. And I think with God, man, I want to be with him, like, all the time. Or have you ever had a cell phone call with somebody, and they just, it's like a long call. And they, what are the, what, maybe they're driving or they're scared or something. And they just, they just want you to be on the phone with them, okay? And, like, okay, so I'm going to put you on speakerphone. We'll be with you. But I'm going to keep doing my stuff. I'm going to keep cooking dinner. I'm going to whatever. And, like, yeah, we'll talk sometimes. Sometimes there'll be some dead silence. But I'm just kind of aware that I got that phone call going on, right? And it's just kind of, for a long period of time, we're connecting. And I think sometimes that could be, like, our prayer life, too, of, like, Sometimes I'll pray, amen, and then I go back to my normal life and I don't think about God. And then, oh, okay, here comes lunch. I'm going to like pray for lunch, and then amen, and then back to my normal life, right? Versus, what if I just keep that phone call on with God? I'm not saying amen, and I'm just kind of always aware of his presence. Like, that's what I want, right? Not that I do it, but that's what I want. And maybe there's just these little, nothing, like little one-sentence prayers. of Like, thank you, God, for this, or whatever. Just whatever pops up. So I just keep that phone call on with God. And I'm just aware with him so I can spend more time with him and deepen my relationship with him. And that's what I want. That's awesome. Let's hear for Eric. Thank you, guys. What what I love about a a day like today is it clearly illustrates that God wants to speak to all of us. The question is, is will we 
flip the pages open and will we point and will we attune our ears to Jesus? I just, lo- I just love what happened today because what I did is I, I called these three guys and said, hey, would you mind doing this with, with me? And, uh, and, and what I think, again, what a day like this illustrates is there's a power individually for you to flip the Bible open and point to a page and say, God, speak to me. But there's a whole nother level of power when we say, don't only speak to me, but speak through me. Y'all get what I'm saying? And what I love about today is, 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 is what Doug had to say. And, and again, like this hour, what kind of jumped out was that perfect component that, that like, like it's so easy to look at everybody else and say, well, you have to be perfect, but maybe not me so much, you know? And, and yet I want to remind us that God isn't demanding perfection here. He's, he's demanding pursuit. Like God just wants an invitation. That's all he wants. And, 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 and again, like, like the, the, the whole pursuit component, I believe, is a focal issue. And so often when we walk down the road and we just get just, just so focused on the anxieties and the worries of the world, and as if we just knew that God was there the whole time, it would just change our life. It would just change our life. And then lastly, with what Eric had just mentioned about his issue with the scripture that I gave him, not ending where it's supposed to. I think that's a great reminder that guess what? Maybe, maybe prayer isn't supposed to be mindless, but it's supposed to be mindful. And some of us, we get into the ruts of prayer. We get into the ruts of the policies of of church or how our relationship with God is supposed to go or, 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 or we remember some of the practices we've done. But what happens is we navigate through them and they mean nothing to us because we have just done it out of vain repetition. And I, I guess what I, I, I sense today, what we need to do today is this, is refuse to say the amen today just to keep it as an open format of God. We have heard you. We've, we've read your verse, your scripture and your words. We've heard from a few really awesome guys today. But Holy Spirit, would you continue that conversation within us? So Holy Spirit, we just pause. And we pursue you. We seek you first today. God, this isn't about us, but this is about you and what you want to do through us and in us. And God, I pray for the next 21 days that you would take us collectively down a journey to become more aware of you. Help us not put you into a compartment, but just keep an open dialogue with you to do your work in and through us. So Lord, we're here. Holy Spirit, we recognize that your presence is here. And just for the next few minutes, Lord, we're not in a hurry. Would you speak to us? Would you speak to us? God, for some of us, would you just encourage us to open up our own scriptures and just lean in and say, Lord, what would you have to say to us today? Would you continue the work that you've already started today? Would you do your work today? Here we are, Lord.
sin was deep, your grace was deeper. My shame was wide, your arms were wider. My guilt was great, your love was greater still. sharing about hide and seek tag, which I will be taking that tip there. I just had this image of people in the room today who have been hiding from God. And even just taking this moment and identifying who you are in the game. And today in this very moment, I just feel that some of you in this room need to come out of hiding. That maybe you've been playing the game of hiding from people. Maybe you've been hiding from God. I know there's been points in my life where I am playing that game where I'm like testing people. Are they going to notice I'm gone? Are they going to notice I'm not there? Do they even care? Do they even love me? Does God even see me? And the game is 
yes, fun to be played, but there comes a point where we need to come out of hiding and we need to say, God, I'm here. It's the, it's the act of us taking that step and it's us stepping out and saying, I need you. And I was brought back to playing the game in our house when I was a little girl. And I remember it was a Saturday night. I remember the day of the week, it was dark out. And our house was like a thousand square feet and I was looking and I could not find my dad. And it was the day I discovered the shower is an option for hiding. And he was in that thing for, I swear, a half hour and he was not giving in. But I just remember crying, dad, dad. And I went in that bathroom how many times and I didn't think to open the curtain. But that is that just has this image for me is that God is here and he is calling you by name. And whether you need him to be your father in this moment, whether you need him to be your friend, whether you've never asked for God to step into your life, to fill your heart, or maybe you're in this room and you're the person counting and you've given up on people and you've stopped looking for them. Or maybe it's the absence of the chair next to you, a a person that you care for that's not here with you today, and that you're trying to come up with every excuse of why you're done looking, why you're done seeking, why you're done trying. And God is here today to say, don't quit. Don't give up on that person, to keep calling their name, to keep pursuing them, pursuing God, because God calls us to be a light. God calls us to be salt. God calls us to even just take that act of surrender. And every single week here at the church, we say a prayer. And this prayer, whether it is your very first time saying it or it's been a long time since you said a prayer like this, it's us positioning ourselves saying, God, you are our rescuer. God, we need you. God, we need to surrender. God, show us what you want to do with our life, that it is not ours. And so Echo Church, I would love it if you say this prayer with me. It's on the screen. Jesus, I surrender. I have more questions than answers, but I choose to follow you anyway. I acknowledge that you lived, you died, and you rose again, all with us in mind. I accept the rescue that you offer. Save me and lead me in Jesus' name and his authority. Amen. And at this time, Echo Church, let's celebrate those that said the prayer for the first time, for the first time in a long time. This moment is significant for you, I believe, with all of my heart. If you need help in your next steps, if you need a Bible to open over the next 21 days, stop at the info table. We have Bibles. Or if you want help in your next steps and you're overwhelmed and you're going, now what? Please stop. We want to talk to you. We want to connect with you. We believe in you. Echo Church, have a great day today.